I can tell it's on because there's a red light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome once again to uh, Iron Crane Dojo. And we're about a few, well, we're a few minutes ahead of a, of a class. And I wanted to cover a point that uh, some folks had asked questions about previously. It's it related to using the escrima stick or the arnie stick or what we call the middle stick, a 28 inch long stick uh, in a uh, blocking and response kind of uh, pattern and, and the questions people had, had referred to me related to how you develop uh, the blocking and responding to an instinctive level where you're not thinking about it all the time about thinking what's the right block to a particular situation. And many years ago, I had devised ways of, of bridging the memorization part into an instinctive flow part with some drills that I created. So what I'm going to do today is just walk you through a very basic drill that relates to the 12 blocks and 12 counters, which are discussed in previous videos. Now, if I remember, I'll put a link to the previous videos in the narrative to this video so that you can visit the previous videos setting up the 12 blocks and the 12 counters so you know what we're talking about. Even if you don't view those other videos, I think this will make sense. As you look at this, you'll sort of see what the layout is after a few seconds. <clears throat> okay, so having said that, and without you know taking too much time talking here, I'm going to have uh, some volunteers come forward. Uh, you two gentlemen, and Carol, if you'll come here also. And usually when you practice something like a block and a counter, you're practicing one person uh, uh, assisted by a partner. So for example, we have Sensei Chris and we have Francisco. And if they were practicing this pattern, there would be 12 strikes and 12 blocks. And uh, Sensei Chris would be the attack. Actually, let the Francisco be the attacker. Attack number one. Just do this real slow so everyone can see what you're doing. Okay, number two. Three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. The other number nine. <laughs> Number 10, good, number 11, and number 12. Okay, good, thank you, gentlemen. Now that's normally how people practice uh, new sets of techniques. They work them with a partner, and the risk that they have when they do that is that you fall into a pattern. You, you get used to each other, and you start standing the same way every time, and you start responding the same way every time. And because there's no element of uncertainty, you fall into a very rigid structure uh, in the techniques that you're developing for yourself. And then these do not match well against the real world. In other words, you're dealing with uncertainty in the real world. And because you have a fixed uh, and very formatted kind of response, because you've isolated your practice, you have limitations in your ability to respond to actual attacks. So what you have to do is you have to create practice scenarios where you're, you're forcing uncertainty into the mix uh, and also changes of position. So here's how we accomplish that, still at a basic level, but still at a very uh, effective level for engendering these skills. <clears throat> so we're going to have a third person in the mix. That will be Carol. And we'll have Sensei Chris over here, if you will, and Francisco here. And what we're establishing here is a triangle of position. So we want them to be equal distance apart. So we'll set Francisco here. Good. And this will be the center of the triangle. <clears throat> and we're going to create a rule of attack. And the rule of attack will be this. We'll start with Sensei Chris. He's the first attacker. Then after he does his attack, Francisco does his attack. And then Carol does her attack. And then the cycle continues. It goes back to Sensei Chris, back to Francisco, back to Carol. 
Now you saw the 12 attacks that, that Francisco did when he attacked Sensei Chris. You can do any one, the attacker here can do any one of the 12 attacks uh, as part of what they're doing, okay? Now what makes it interesting is this, instead of Sensei Chris always having to attack Francisco as, or, or Francisco always having to attack Sensei Chris as was the case with two people practicing, when you have the triangle geometry here, Sensei Chris can attack either of those two. Okay, so whoever he attacks has to respond effectively to the attack with the correct block, with the correct position, and with the correct counter. Now at first it's hard. Okay, at first it's tricky. But after a month or two, you get really good at it. And after a couple of years, you get amazingly good at it. So, you know, there's a lot that you can, you can gather from this drill as far as developing instinctive response. Okay, so we'll just, for example, have Sensei Chris uh, prepare to attack. Everyone just get in a ready position to defend yourself. So they both have to be mindful of Sensei Chris. Now, we're not going to, we're not going to go full speed here. We're going to go in slow motion so that our friends out there can get an idea of how to set this up. And since that Chris executes his attack, Carol does a block. Now just hold your positions here for a second. <clears throat> so he does a number two strike, and Carol's doing the appropriate response and counter to the number two strike. Now, since that Chris attacked from this position, now I'm gonna ask you to bring the camera over here. I want you to see that Carol correctly, not only correctly blocked the uh, incoming attack and correctly responded to it, but she correctly positioned. She went to the off angle where the power was limited. See, the maximum strike of, the maximum power of the strike is dissipated at this point and now it's diminishing. So she moved outside the power curve there. So all of that was affected. Now she steps back and since it Chris goes back, and they're back on the three points of the triangle. So we step back just a tad further, and the next attacker is Francisco. And he can attack either of these two, so they're both aware of him. Okay. And then the next attacker, and it sort of flows like this logically from this point. Now, Carol can attack either of these two. It's her choice. And then she moves with her attack. Okay. Now we're back to Sensei Chris. Okay, now in this situation, we're just doing with the basic blocks and the basic strikes. So I'm gonna ask Sensei Chris to repeat the attack, and then Francisco will do the basic block, and then the basic strike counter. Okay, good. Now, Francisco attacks. And again, you can see where the uncertainty is. He can attack either of the two. Good, Carol attacks. Okay, good. Now, you won't be perfect as you do this. You know, as you're going through it in the beginning, you'll have uh, lots of opportunities to correct yourself. Now, you can make it more interesting uh, because there's a lot of subtle things that are occurring within the context of the drill. For example, it's now Sensei Chris's turn to attack. Now he sets up a, an eye fake or he does something to throw one person off as he moves to the other. But he'll do it in slow motion here so we don't have an accident on film. We're not all wearing glasses right now, so we have to be extra careful. And over time, you start putting that kind of mentality into the drill. Can you step back again, sir? And it can be anything as, as simple. Let me step in your place here, if you will. See, I, I can be looking, it could be an eye fake, reaching over to the other person. Uh, it can be, I start here and turn here. And it gets to be uh, very similar to what you're doing when you're dealing in real situations. You're flowing from one person to another and you're developing that whip-like action that coordinates and combines uh, uh, with uh, your overall flow to adding power to the technique while you're 
floating on the surface of fakes and uh, subterfuge. Okay, so Francisco, uh, see what you can conjure up. Now, not everyone has done this drill. I, I, I'm sort of letting you, the visitor, walk through it for your first time as some of the folks here uh, are developing their experience with it. So if we see mistakes, don't be too critical. It's just, uh, I want you to see how you have to work through it by seeing how we work through it. Okay, so Francisco, just go slow, but you see if you can develop a fake. Okay, and next attack is Carol's. Same deal. Good. Now, step back to where you were. At any point in time, uh, the teacher or the person in charge, to make it more interesting, can say, okay, Reverse directions. Sensei Chris, you're first. Now by reverse directions, I mean that the attackers are now going counterclockwise. And the next attacker is Carol. And just little things like that, like reversing directions, actually add something to the complexity of the dynamic that the defender has to learn to respond to. You'll see in a second how that works. Going back, since the Chris reverse directions. Okay, because we reverse directions, the attack now goes to Francisco. And then the next attack goes to Carol. Now, uh, another aspect of this that's uh, you're not just learning how to block and counter, you're learning how to set up fakes, and you're also learning how to look for flaws in the way a person is standing, in the way that they're, they're postured relative to you, which can become openings for your attacks. So if I'm here in place of Carol, and it's, it's my turn to attack. So part of what I'm, I'm looking for as a potential attacker is how are they defended? And I see Francisco's stick is placed vertical toward his center. I, in the lead leg, I have an opportunity to go for. Since the Chris is slightly open on this side, so I can try to work around that. And since the Chris takes his attack, he's looking for openings. If I relax, and what will happen is some people will develop uh, lack of full attention to their defense and they'll relax their posture or they'll let their stick drop a little bit and they won't know that it's creating an opening and then this person whose turn it is to attack will try to find those openings as they occur if they occur and then and then respond to them okay you're attacking so there's a lot here that you can experiment with and that you could add into the drill now, Carol, I ask that you step in for Francisco. Typically, the drill, as it, as it unfolds, has a bit of a flow to it. And, and as you get better at it, you, you begin to accelerate the drill. OK, so you go. And you, uh, your attack, sir. May attack? Yeah. OK, Carol's attack. My attack. Since Chris's attack, Carol's attack, my attack. Since Chris's attack, and you get the idea. And then, as you get good at this, and when you're wearing eye protection, you go full speed, and it becomes quite fun, but quite challenging. Okay, so you, there's a whole lot here to think about and to work with uh, when you visit uh, with your instructor. Uh, relate this uh, to him and uh, see if he thinks it's something that will be productive for you to put into your uh, uh, thought process relating to self-defense. And enjoy, have fun, and we'll see you down the line.